Now, four families whose relatives were jailed for life in South Sudan continue to plead with the government to help them get their kin back home. The relatives who have even gone on a hunger strike to push the government to intervene say the government has let them down. They are now making personal pleas to President Uhuru Kenyatta to step in. Playful and bubbly, Jaden Baraka is your typical two-and-a-half-year-old boy. But one thing is missing, daddy. Anthony Kea is among four Kenyans jailed for life in South Sudan. Anthony, a graphic designer, left the country when Jaden was only 10 months old. Now, two years, nine months old, he has missed seeing his son take his first steps, utter his first words, and daddy was not one of them. Though we know they are, they are alive, but so and very difficult. You can, I don't know how I can explain to my child that when maybe when one day he'll ask me where is my dad. Or... At the Kenya Human Rights Commission Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the pain of a mother says it all. Esther Kamodo's second-born son, Anthony Modime II, is languishing in a South Sudan jail. And so is Ravi Gadda, a business development manager, and Boniface Chuma Murioki, who left when his wife was expectant and has never seen his daughter. The four worked for Click Technologies, whose owner, John Ago, was wanted for allegedly defrauding the government of South Sudan of millions of dollars. They were among 16 people who were arrested on the 29th of May last year when security agencies raided the premises. One year, six months later. We have exhausted every single means of ours. The four and 11 others were sentenced to life imprisonment in June this year on what their families say were trumped up charges. But before their sentencing, relatives say their case was filled with intrigues. They were never allowed an audience with their own lawyers. They were kept in custody of the complainant. Upon several requests of our lawyer to be taken to prison, they were denied. They were still being tortured where they were kept. Witnesses were being intimidated when they were being taken to court. Some were even threatened not to go to court. Our lawyer was threatened at gunpoint to drop the case. Families of the four say they have made endless trips to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, written letters to the Office of the President, the issue was mentioned in Parliament, they have held demonstrations and even went on a hunger strike. It will be welcome to our daughter. Relatives of the four claim they are being held in inhumane conditions. I visited them and they're in very poor conditions. People are suffering from typhoid. They have malaria. They've not been eating well. Social activists have been running campaigns dubbed Free South Sudan 4, including one on Twitter. Having exhausted all their means to try and get their kin back home, the families say their only hope lies in President Uhuru Kenyatta. Our daughter was suffering for a long time. We were saying that the president of the government of Kenya to kindly speak to his counterpart so that he can, so they can come to an agreement at least so that our boys can come home to us. His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta. I need his direct intervention. It has come to a stage where none of us can be able to assist these boys. I know our president is, has that heart. And please, I just urge him to use his power to bring back our people so that we can, be, we can have a peace of mind. The search for greener pastures for the four may have turned into a nightmare, but their families are hanging on to hope that one day they will be reunited with their loved ones. Rita Tinina, KTN News.